What up on this video is a response to SpinnerNet1 on his video Jeff Hardy's return and CM Punk is he getting screwed. First off, let me get to Jeff Hardy and his return. Um, yes, I'm pretty much excited him returning. Not the hugest Jeff Hardy fan, but he is a little entertaining to watch. Now on to the other thing, I do not think he needs to be pushed up to the main eventer and get back in that position anytime soon. I think he needs to be a mid-carder and pretty much a mid-carder the rest of his life because um, until he um, is able to get the world title and even somewhat main event, he needs to pay his dues. And yes, he has paid his dues through the year, but he keeps on keeps on fucking up his career with WWE by keep on getting suspended and you know failing the wellness test and stuff like that. That is, I don't think Jeff Hardy is a tremendous performer in the ring. He's mad over with the crowd. But he is not worth the risk of putting in the main event. I don't think he's worth the risk. Um, some people might say, "Okay, I don't care how I don't, I don't care how much of a risk he is if he's making money and he's in the main of and he can get you know huge crowd reaction." Some people will look away from that and say, "Okay, let's just put him in the main event for the hell of it." And okay, if something something else happens, you know that he gets suspended. Obviously, you know, you just throw him on Raw and have him drop the title or something like that. But I think it will diminish the title and it will um, not help the main event. Main event, and I don't think Jeff Hardy is worthy of being up there. Um, I think Matt Hardy is more worthy of being a world champion than Jeff Hardy. Um, Jeff Hardy, yes, he is exciting to watch in the ring, um, but overall, you know, he's nothing more than a spot monkey. He's a guy that goes in there, pulls off some, you know, tremendous moves. But other than that, he doesn't have in-ring psychology. He cannot tell a story in his matches. The only story he can tell is playing the underdog role, and that only takes you as that doesn't take you that far. So you know that's not that's not worth keep trying to do. Um, you know he's not that he's not that good to put in the main event, and I don't think he's worthy of it. Um, because you know you look at some of his main event matches he's had this year when he was in the main event. Most of those matches were pretty much good and told a good story because of the other performer, you know, the Shawn Michaels, the Chris Jericho's, the Randy Orton's, and even Triple H, even though I know people dislike Triple H, um, even Triple H uh, put him over, and I know some people say, oh, okay, it was just a roll-up, but he did put him over, and um, yeah, Jeff Hardy is not worthy of being in the main event, stick him in the mid-card for a while. Um, another thing you can do since Jeff Hardy's matter with the crowd, you can raise the prestige of the IC title. Try to make the IC title mean something again. I mean, when you have guys like um, Chris Jericho and Jeff Hardy fighting over the Intercontinental title, that somewhat rises the prestige of that title because that's two guys that you can say, these two, these two guys just were in the main event not that long ago. So that's another good thing that comes out of this. You can make one of your other titles finally mean something because... Everyone knows the Intercontinental title doesn't mean anything. The U.S. title don't mean anything. The tag titles don't mean anything. Beth Phoenix and Mickie James and somewhat Melina are trying to make the women's title mean something, but that really doesn't mean anything, especially when you got the Playboy models of Maria and Ashley going around and trying to compete in the ring. That doesn't make that look, that title mean anything. So, you know, that's the good thing out of this. Possibly, you know, you get one of the secondary titles to finally mean something again, so that's the good part that comes out of this, and yeah, just like I've said, stick him in the mid-card, um, possibly, you know, if he proves himself again that he can be trustworthy, which I am one of those people that will not trust Jeff as a main eventer, and if WWE pushes him to the main event again, if something happens where he gets suspended, um, I'm not going to I'm not gonna even be shocked in Anyone that was actually shocked this last time or any time they got suspended, I don't know what they were thinking because as soon as I heard it last time, I wasn't shocked at all. And, you know, if this happens again, WWE, you're going to basically fuck yourself over. And, you know, this is going to basically look like, okay, we we'll keep giving Jeff Hardy so many chances and all these other guys back, backstage are going to get pissed and all these guys are going to say, okay, Jeff Hardy keeps getting suspended, fucking his career up, but I'm not getting a push and I'm actually doing my job. Um, staying clean and stuff, even though most of the WWE roster isn't clean, but still, you know, you know what I mean. And um, the next part is um, is CM Punk getting screwed. And yes, CM Punk is getting completely screwed by WWE after he won the Money in the Bank. Um, obviously, everyone knew that the Money in the Bank 
was most likely going to be given to Jeff Hardy if Jeff Hardy didn't get suspended. So they just basically, I guess, threw it to CM Punk, went the opposite route. Instead of giving it to the alcoholic drunk guy in Jeff Hardy, they gave it to CM Punk, the straight edge wrestler. Um, now, the one thing in this, you could possibly, you know, I wouldn't want to do a feud of Jeff Hardy and CM Punk and have the money in the bank on the line because I think CM Punk needs to be the world champion and needs to be the world champion as soon as he cashes in this money in the bank because everyone knows the per person that cashes in the money in the bank is obviously going to win the world title. But the way they have been booking CM Punk after he won this, I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know. See, uh, I could almost see Jeff Hardy, you know, getting the money in the bank from him because they're not booking CM Punk in a way to make him look strong. Night after he won the Money in the Bank, he loses cleanly to Chris Jericho. Then he gets vindication in the King of the Ring tournament of beating Chris Jericho. That so that takes that away from him. Then he loses this um, William Regal in the finals, which I didn't have no problem with because I'm a huge Regal mark and was glad they were finally starting to do something with Regal. Now I really love this um, thing they're doing with um, Regal as the GM on Raw. And I think it's doing very good for him and think it's something different they got to do so that that came off good but then when you have CM Punk getting completely demolished and CM Punk basically got completely uh, his ass fucking kicked by Chuck Palumbo on ECW even though he didn't pin him it ended I guess in a disqualification or no contest um I can't really remember I just flipped to it and flipped to it because I barely ever watch ECW but I saw that, and that just made me flip the channel back. Because so I was like, what the fuck are that pushing Chuck Palumbo for over CM Punk and having him demolish CM Punk? That was not a good thing and didn't make any sense. Um, I don't understand why Chuck Palumbo is getting a push. And, you know, no one I, th I don't think anyone's buying this whole Chuck Palumbo American Badass version 2 gimmick. It's not working for him. And, you know, he's a guy that I think I, I cannot understand why he's still on a WWE contract. I, I'm surprised he hasn't been released yet. Possibly he's an ass kisser back, backstage or something because that's the only way I can see him having a job. Then last night on ECW, I didn't watch ECW last night, but I did see, did read the results and CM Punk lost cleanly to the Miz. Um, now, I see this isn't as bad as the Chuck Palumbo thing, but this is still bad losing to the Miz. And this, and you, you have CM Punk job to him cleanly, and that if it wasn't job to him cleanly, and he, you know, used them, used tights or something like that, it would have been okay. Um, and it somewhat makes sense because it's building up to CM Punk and Kane versus, I guess, John Morrison and the Miz, a, I guess, tag team title defense on Judgment Day. And when's the last time the tag titles been on pay per view? So I guess they had to do something to build up that match, but still, nonetheless, that was not a good decision of booking CM Punk and they have not been doing a good job of booking CM Punk here so I wouldn't be shocked you know that after Judgment Day CM Punk is on Raw and loses the money in the bank to Jeff Hardy which I think will be one of the worst booking decisions in WWE history um, because I think CM Punk is on the line it's on the same lines of you know Joe's title run you know TNA held Samoa Joe back so long that by the time he finally won the world title, people didn't care, and you know, it pe people lost interest in it. You don't want to do the same thing with CM Punk. You want the crowd is mad. He's mad over with the crowd. He gets probably some of the biggest pops in WWE, and you want to, you know, obviously, even though I would love to see a CM Punk heel in WWE, I see why they keep him in, keeping him in face because he's that over with the crowd, and it wouldn't make sense turning him heel at least at this point, and. That would be something to save for the future in CM Punk's career in WWE. So that's, you know, a thing I'd like to see in the future. But that's going to be a long ways away that they'll probably turn him heel. And, you know, if they fuck this up and don't give CM Punk the title, because I don't count the ECW title as a world title. The only ones that count are the, you know, the Raw and SmackDown title. So as soon as he gets one of those, he'll finally be a world champion in WWE, even though they somewhat count the ECW title as a world title. But... I think I don't think anyone counts that title at all, and that title doesn't mean shit anymore. So hopefully they'll do the right thing with CM Punk. I guess we just have to wait and see. But the way they've been booking here just looks like they're gonna completely fuck this up and fuck CM Punk over and put over Jeff Hardy yet again, a guy that's not trustworthy and a guy 
that is a risk of being in the main event and is probably one of the worst um, nightmares in wrestling history is Jeff Hardy holding the world title just because I think he's not trustworthy and he's not a guy that it should be in the main event, and I, I, even though he's over with the crowd and he makes money, it's not worth the risk. And um, yeah, that's it. That's just my thoughts of the Jeff Hardy return and um, is CM Punk getting screwed? And um, yeah, that's it. He needs to be a mid Carter and pretty much a mid Carter the rest of his life because um, until he um, is able to get the world title and even somewhat main event, he needs to pay his dues. And yes, he. Has what up on um, this video is a response to SpinnerNet1 on his video, Jeff Hardy's return, and CM Punk, is he getting screwed? First off, let me get to Jeff Hardy and his return. Um, yes, I'm um, pretty much excited him returning. Not the hugest Jeff Hardy fan, but he is a little entertaining to watch. Now, on to the other thing, I do not think he needs to be pushed up to the main event and get back in that position anytime soon. I think he has paid his dues through the year, but he keeps on keeps on fucking up his career with WWE by keep on getting suspended and, you know, failing the wellness test and stuff like that. That is, I don't think, Jeff Hardy is a tremendous performer in the ring. He's mad over with the crowd, but he is not worth the risk of putting in the main event. I don't think he's worth the risk 